What do you do when Lightroom's merge to panorama doesn't work? Find out this week in post. Hi, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to InPost. This is a series where I'll do some post-processing work, uh, sometimes talking about a technique, sometimes a, a photo being styled from a previous in the field shoot, or like in today's situation, a bunch of questions came in about panoramas and I had one photo that became kind of a, a problem for panos. So before I dive into it, if you have questions about post-processing, I'd like to hear from you. You can contact me right through my website, comments on the video, however you'd like to get a hold of me. I'll turn a question uh, back to you probably in uh, 48 hours or so, and uh, your question may be featured on a future in-post episode. But the more important part of it is we're all going to become better photographers together and getting these answers and you know, using them to further our craft. So with that, let's take a look at what happened with today's pano. I did a shootout at Laguna Beach, and one of the things I did do is take a panorama of some pretty interesting light that was going on. I showed you a incomplete version of that pano, and uh, I, now I'm going to show you, you know, why is it incomplete, why did I have problems? So what I have here is I've taken 12 different photos from here all the way to here. And you know I, these happen to be arranged in an odd-looking way, but I was sweeping from right to left. And as you can see, as I got toward the edge of the land, I went all the way out past the ocean, and so these last three photos make those highlighted here, here, and here. They all look very, very, very similar. And so when I took all of these, select them all, and did photo photo merge panorama, let Lightroom do its thing, it came up with this photo right here. I'm going to make this large. Now, what's strange here, not strange, but what's missing is on the left side of this image, there's not a lot of orange sky. It's, it's, it's small. What ended up happening is Lightroom said, well, these other panels, they look very similar and just discarded them, didn't bother using them. Well, that was a bummer. And I tried a couple of things about, you know, putting a... Um, like an overexposure brush, just like a couple of dots on each one of those different things to try to trick the merge to panorama to recognize that these are in fact different photos. It didn't work out. I sent the photos into Photoshop and on one of them, it took more than the uh, just nine of them. So you can see I got that long stretch of beach here, but this area looked all sorts of funniness. It, it didn't work. Um, tried repeating that a few times. Most of the time, and since then, I have not been able to replicate this. I get, I'll show you what I get in Photoshop. I get something that looks like this, which is, you know, richly bizarre. I'm not sure what Photoshop is determining with those few extra frames. I mean, one of them is, uh, just, I, I just don't know what's happening here. And I've tried a variety of different settings in the, you know, Photoshop uh, panorama merges and come up with similar results. So what can we do about this? Go back to Lightroom and go to the grid mode. So we have this photo which is pretty good. I mean, you know, the, the merge that Lightroom did is good. I like, I like what it did, but it's just missing some of these other panels. So I'm going to select these two and you have to start doing just manual layer merging. So I'm going to send these over into on one. That's actually where I prefer to do my layering. I'll send them over as layers. So I get both of those in a single document and I'll show you what you have to do uh, to manually line these things up. So here are the two layers in on one. See, we've got the large pano on the bottom and then this individual selection here. If I turn off the pano, we've just got that one wedge that has a little tiny bit of land there and the rest of it's just that orange sky. So how would we go about merging these together? What I want, if I press the V key for the transform tool, you know, I want this over here somewhere. I've got no canvas left. Well, the first thing we need to do, let me just cancel that out, escape, cancel. We need to resize the canvas so we have a place to put this. So I go into edit menu, adjust canvas size, and um, I'm gonna take a guess, let's just make it big, 70 inches wide, and say apply. Okay, that's pretty good. It actually expanded it because I had a lock proportion set. So now I've got some room to work with. Let me select the lower layer, V key for the transform tool, and I'll just move that over to the right, just kind of inching up to the edge there. 
apply that. Now I'll take this one and I'll switch over into the loop view so that as my cursor moves around, you can see the loop is changing. And press the V key. And I'm going to position my cursor kind of right at that horizon line really close to the edge. So you can see, I can see those little bits of trees or whatever that end, end land mass is there in the loop. So now my eyes are right now on the preview window, kind of positioning that layer and now my eyes are switching over to the loop view and I'm going to start inching my way along the horizon until I get close enough to the land which is pretty far in there we go and so now we're starting to see where we can line up I'm just almost rocking my finger back and forth on the uh, the, uh, the the touchpad there now I'm shifting to the arrow keys I'm actually just using the arrow to try to line this up the loop is no longer going to work for that, so I'm looking. Now I'm refreshing, not good. Arrow down. I'm going to have some troubles here. But this is the kind of work that you have to start doing as you start having to manually position the different layers to try to merge them together. And that's painstaking, uh, but if I really want to have that extra bit of uh, you know orange sky and then really have that full almost 180 view of the pano, that's what I'm going to have to do. Uh, Lightroom is not working for me. Photoshop's not working for me. There is another tool called PT GUI, which I haven't used in um, several years now. Um, I guess I just don't do that many panos, and so Lightroom most of the time worked for me. But that's got some additional uh, controls where you can set individual points, as I recall, on the different photos and really guide the software and say, hey, here are your reference points. This is where you want to start stitching things up and you can have it take from there. So that if you're doing a lot of panos and you're starting to hit problems like this, that might be a tool to go look at. So the tip of the week is that when Lightroom's merge to panorama doesn't work for you, you can try Photoshop if you've got it, but beyond that, you're gonna be doing manual layer stitching um, or looking for another tool. And that wraps up this weekend post. Hope you've enjoyed it. And again, if you have questions about post-processing or anything about photography, please send them my way. You can contact me directly through my website, comments on the video, tweet at me, Instagram, however you'd like to get a hold of me. I'm in a bunch of different places. It'd be great to hear from you. Until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.